Um, I personally would like to see a uh, simulated potato field with the fidelity of the unreal uh, simulated city they used in the newer Matrix movie. That would be that would be pretty cool. I would just go hang out there. <laughs> Welcome everyone to OpenCV Weekly Webinar, episode 59, if you can believe that. I am your co-host with the co-most, Phil Nelson, sitting in the big chair. Well, it's the same chair. Dr. Satya Malik is on assignment. Joining me in his stead is Anna Petrovicheva. <laughs> Said her name wrong again. We, she, she psyched me out. Uh, Anna, please uh, introduce yourself. Say hi. Uh, hi, everybody. Hi, Phil. Um, this was actually super close. Um, my, my surname is definitely hard to pronounce, so yeah. Uh, so I'm with OpenCV for 12 years now, uh, doing computer vision uh, of different flavors. Um, and yeah, acting as a CTO of OpenCV.ai. Awesome. Thank you, Anna. And our guest this week is Michal of Team Potato Lovers. Go ahead and introduce yourself, Michal. Hello, I'm Michal. I'm, I'm from Poland. It's nice to be here today. Thank you. So if this is the first time joining the webinar for any of you in the audience, or if you just need a reminder, there are a few things we do every single week here on OpenCV Weekly Webinar. One of those is we take Q&A from you in the audience. Please use the Zoom Q&A button at the bottom of the window there to ask your question at any time during the show. If you're not in Zoom, you can get there by going to opencv.live. We also give a trivia giveaway to one lucky winner of a question that I will make up based on the slides. Stay tuned for that later in the show. They will win $200 of Microsoft Azure credits from our sponsors at Microsoft Azure. Thanks to them and Intel for sponsoring this episode of the show. Um, Michal, it's your show. I'm going to go ahead and share the screen so you can get started with your presentation. Okay, good. So during the presentation, I'm going to show how we used AI and machine learning for precision pest control. We're going to go through the bid process and we, I, I'm going to show to my, our story of the competition. So our, we called our team Potato Lovers. So the team consists of two members. The first member is Marta. Marta is an accountant. She, she has no IT background, but she was involved in the project. She had many tasks. There, there are many tests she could do uh, as a non-developer. And I'm the second member of the team. My name is Michał Rzepka. I'm embedded software developer with a networking background. I work for a small company in Poland and I'm prototyping devices. So one of the, the, one of the things we love about doing these competitions is that we get a lot of, to be a lot of people's first AI project. And it's awesome that we uh, got to do that for Marta here. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about the Colorado potato beetle. Yeah, so the Colorado potato beetle is a small bug which eats potato leaves, as you can see on the photo. They destroy growth by eating the leaves and the, they look like on the picture. So they have, they have yellow and black stripes on the shells and they potentially could destroy uh, potatoes because they just eating them. And we can move forward. So we can uh, fight against what the um, potato beetles uh, in many ways. One of the way is to gather them by hands, but that's really tedious work. And my my grandparents were were doing that like like that way. So they were gathering they by, by, by hands. And another way to, sorry, could you go back? Mm -hmm. Another way to, to fight against crowd of potato beetles is to spray them with pesticides. But as we all know, awareness of chemicals, chemicals in food is increasing and people try to avoid the, that because it's unhealthy. So our idea is to, to do something with the, the problem with the plate of beetles. Um, one question, how, how many of these beetles would you find on like uh, an acre of land uh, maybe during, during, should, a, the, during the big season? Maybe we should talk about meters. So 
Yeah, I think sorry. You, you can find <laughs> a, a square uh, kilometer. <laughs> no, like uh, what? What about like a hundred? A hundred meters? Tell me. Tell me how many it would be in a hundred meters. I think in, in one square meter you could find one hundred. Okay, so we're talking thousands in in a, yeah, a larger. Exactly. Yeah, wow. The, so, the millions on, on a huge. And, I, and how how large are they in in terms of you know just? I, they are all, uh, around one centimeter. Yeah. So like, I mean, that's not a small bug. Like that's, that's something you can identify, you know, um, yeah, exactly. cool. It All seems right. still you have never collected potatoes, did you? No, no, they don't, they don't, uh, they didn't, they didn't grow them in the Nelson family. Um, we'll have to ask Joseph Nelson about that. I think they just, they only do corn. <laughs> Cause I did. And this is the reason why I super love the project. Because <laughs> you like you you can't believe it's a super tedious work to find these like nasty beetles and kind of put them somewhere away from your precious potato leaves. Yeah, exactly. I, I do recall I having to uh, a, a few times um, some some potato plants or uh, some tomato plants got uh, infested with hornworms, um, and those things were difficult because those those are like you know yay long. And they'll try to fight you. <laughs> luckily, they're luckily they're slow and very dumb. <laughs> uh, go ahead. Okay, so our idea was to create a vehicle which moves along potato roll and detects the and detects the these bugs. So we what we wanted to do was to put the camera, the OD light camera, on the top of the vehicle. Uh, to to allow us to detect these bugs, and then with the information about the location of these bugs, we could spray them point wise, so that would reduce amount of use pesticides a lot of. So we just want to have, uh, reduce amount of chemicals used to protect potato fields. So that's our idea. So um, another question: What was this an idea you had before the? competition or was it something that you you came up with based on the the prerequisites of the comp the contest i i had thoughts about the this idea before but i was i had no motivation the competition gave, gave me a motivation to to do something with that see if satia was here he'd be so happy to hear that <laughs> i have to, have to remind him now it, it is true though like uh i think having having goals imposed sometimes gives us extra motivation to do them the the constraints actually make it more likely we, we will succeed because there's there's a goal you know versus just a nebulous idea that you might like to do having a concrete time frame that you have to do it in sometimes is the forcing function that that makes it possible really so that's that's cool that's good to, it's good to hear that that uh open cv spatial ai con com contest sponsored by Intel and Microsoft Azure was able to do that for you. Great. So, so as for the vehicle, we choose to use a Lego Mindstorm set, uh, mm -hmm. which provides us a way to build five different robots. And there are in the box there are like hundreds of pieces, a few motors, a Lego hub. It's like a microprocessor. Hmm. And microcontroller and our Lego provides great support with many instructions. So we just were following step by step instructions uh, to build our robot. Yeah, and uh, people watching the webinar will likely recognize this Lego set from some of the other contests we've done, um, even even this most recent one. But this is also the basis for Charlie, the grand prize winner of OpenCV uh, AI Competition 2021. Yeah, the, the set gives a lot of opportunities to to build many many robots. For so, example, yeah, for example, so we we choose MVP robot. That that's the one of the five possibilities, and so uh, it provides a robotic arm, but it's kind of crane. So we needed it to to be able to aim on the uh, these bugs. Mm -hmm. As well as, could you go back? Yeah. Uh, as well as Lego Hub, which allows us to communicate with with Raspberry Pi or any other computer uh, through the serial communication or, or Bluetooth. 
Okay, we can move forward. Yes, yeah, so that was the phase of assembling this robot. Probably the most. Yeah, exactly. Probably so the, the most. Yeah. yeah. Sure. So tell me, how does it feel? Does it feel like you were kind of? Does it put you back into kind of childhood years when you were so excited to you know play <laughs> with things? Yeah, exactly. Because it has exactly. this vibe, right? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. That was the, the most joyful part of the project, and we are waiting for, for that part. <laughs> and, About how yeah. long did it take to uh, assemble the just the Lego uh, kit? It took like few few evenings. That makes few sense. Evenings. Cool. So as you can see, there are many motors, the the Lego hub, and many many parts. So we 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 possibility to, to modify the robot because there were many parts uh, which left after building the base robot so we could mm -hmm. modify to, to adjust the robot to our requirements and of course there was also the instruction to to follow the follow step by step and and build the robot yeah all right okay so I recognize that guy. That's, that's what I'm using for a webcam right now, in fact. Cool. So we, we've got the Oak Delight camera for that project. And first thing we did was to try many, as many examples and dem demos as possible. They were very helpful for us because they show many aspects which camera allow us to, to do. Well, actually, the camera uh, the demo shows uh, possibility of the camera, and so we tried many examples to to be aware of what we can do with this camera. And of course, we also read the documentation. And this, surprisingly, the camera is very small. We've been expecting something much much bigger, and the camera <laughs> is really small. And it's really powerful, which we're gonna see in the next slide. Yeah. So the next step was to introduce ourselves into machine learning. As I said, we were not experienced with machine learning. I did some small projects, some small student projects. Uh, long ago, so you can consider us as unexperienced. So, as I said, first first thing we had to try many many demos, examples, read documentation, and we started to preparing our data set. So we gathered many hundreds of images of these bugs, these crowded potato beetles. And we started labeling potatoes, labeling uh, these images. So it took us also a lot of time. And we used for that reason, for that purpose, the label image. That's a Python program, very useful and easy to use. Yeah, I've, I've used that one before myself. Um, how many, uh, how did you capture these, these training images? We, 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 because that no, it's off season of because there are, there are no potato plants now, so we had to improvise, and we created our artificial bugs. We printed photos and cut out of the photos these bugs and give them a shape of of the bug, and made our photos. And also we used images from the internet. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. So uh, we used YOLO v5 model also in the project. Is any any particular for, reason for, for choosing that version of no, YOLO? Not really. YOLO? No, not really, because as I said, we are we were not experienced. So just we like the, the examples with, with YOLO v5 model and we, we decided to use. Yeah, and it's, it's very fast, especially on Oak Delight, um, yeah. Uh, OK, 
Okay, so the learning. Okay, okay. Uh, the learning process with Deep Learning So, so to learn our network, we used a Jupyter Notebook example from Luxonis repository, which was very very useful. Uh, the the one notebook provides us the whole process of training our custom network from the choosing the uh, data set to actually generating ready to uh, to use blob file so the, the these examples from luxonis repository was were very very useful and also user friendly so we, I, we had some experience with Jupyter notebooks, but the, the notebook from the Luxonis was really easy to, to read and to, to get knowledge about what we are doing, actually. Yeah, the documentation for, for Oak D um, and the whole Oak series with Depth AI is just super, super easy to get started with. I yeah. agree. It helped me out a lot that, too. That the, the best uh, point to start doing something with OD. Okay, so during the training process, we we reused Microsoft Azure because we had no access to a powerful computer around us. So so thanks to the sponsors, we we had possibility to use Microsoft Azure servers. So we picked a Ubuntu image. And we just launched the uh, Jupyter Notebook mentioned in the previous slide on that server. We connected uh, with that notebook through SSH tunnel. And we were just working like on the local machine. The huge advantage is that the most of required tools uh, were already installed on the, on the image. So that that made it easy yeah and i'm what kind of uh how, how long uh what was the speed like here i know um all the contest participants got access to microsoft azure with uh, the super fast intel hardware um how did did how did it work for you in terms of the workflow like when you needed to say change something how, how fast was it uh so to to train our network we needed a few hours like eight, maybe ten. So that that was like a complete process. Right on. And yeah, and if you didn't have access to this, it probably would have been like a week. <laughs> right? Yeah, <exactly. laughs> so the next part of the project was to create a spray gun to actually be possible be able to to spray the point wise these bugs. So we've created the whole system. We based on low voltage water pump and we've created an electronic circuit for power supplying that water pump. The, this uh, circuit was controlled by Raspberry Pi. We've used E square C interface. And as you can see, the uh, pipe from the water pump uh, just go along the whole vehicle and end at the top of the robotic arm. This is my personal favorite part. I'm a huge fan of any time we combine electronics and water. Yeah. <laughs> we both like risk. <laughs> okay, so there you can see the top of the gun. Actually, it's made of the end of the perfume. I was gonna say, is that is that from a spray <laughs> bottle? For this? I love yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. And as you can see, the range of the gun was like uh, ten centimeter, and and actually it was point wise, so it matched our requirements. Yeah, that that's simple, but it works. Yeah, sometimes the dumb solutions are the best ones. <laughs> <laughs> that one. The, Okay, here we can see a video of when we are testing our spray gun. I'm gonna launch the 
test script from laptop and test the spray gun. I was hoping that you would accidentally have it. I mean, the, the classic thing to do would be it doesn't work and then you point it at your face and then it squirts you in the face. <laughs> Not this time. Maybe next time. So, yeah, so that's the, the spray gun. Very cool. It was a simple system with some small water pump. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so vehicle is assembled, so it's time for coding. And as you can see on that picture, there's a whole whole system. Uh, so on the, on the rear of the vehicle, we can see the jar with the water pump, who fill with water. On the top of the robot, there is a OD light camera, uh, which is connected in the middle with with Raspberry Pi. And below the Raspberry Pi, there is a power bank. And below the power bank, there is a Lego hub. And there is a, the, the gun at the end of the um, robotic arm. We can, we can hear you. It's a very imposing figure. If I were a Colorado Beetle, I would be terrified of this thing. <laughs> That's why we call it Colorado Beetle Buster. Right. Okay, so next step was to connect OD light camera with Raspberry Pi. So the camera provided us uh, object detection and deep image. And the Raspberry Pi receives this information from the camera and process this information to, to control the whole whole vehicle. So once again, uh, Luxon's examples was very, were very useful because we based on these examples to to get knowledge how to deal with these images with pipelines and generally with the deep AI uh, framework. So we had a problem with uh, power supplying, and we had to create a USB Y cable because we had an inefficient uh, power source for for supply the camera but so we separated the data lines and the supply lines and we created a USB white cable yeah we heard we heard a similar thing from uh, team Midwest defenders that they had to do a little bit of uh, DIY with regards to the power supply um, yeah, exactly. this this is pretty interesting did you did you have to make this one or was it was it a part that you were able to acquire uh, I made it by myself I like it. Again, I love it whenever there's water and exposed electronics. It's my favorite. It's <laughs> my favorite see, thing. <laughs> you can see, you can see my work in the picture. There's a USB-C connector. Sounds like black magic to me here. <laughs> okay, so the next step was to connect Lego Hub and Raspberry Pi. Uh, so the uh, so we connected these two microcontrollers over the serial port and the uh, Lego hub is running uh, MicroPython and executes our scripts and the Raspberry Pi sends commands to, to the Lego hub like uh, run the vehicle, stop the vehicle or rotate the arm to a specific position. And uh, so we created an um, interface to to manage the legal hub. That's cool. It, it, the commands there remind me a lot. I don't know if you've ever, you're probably not old enough, but have you ever used the logo programming language? <laughs> There's this little little turtle, you draw, draw stuff on the screen, you can say, go forward, turn left, that sort of thing. It's from 1 million years ago. Uh, we talked about it on the webinar episode with uh, Kat Scott from Ross uh, not long ago. So another challenge was to um, actually translate detected object coordinates to robotic arm movement. So the first, the first task was to uh, convert 
uh, coordinates of detected bugs from the cam camera point of view, camera perspective, to the point of view of robotic arm. And the second task was to translate the coordinates of the bug to motor speed, uh, to, to motor step mm, movement. So there there's some, some, there's some complexity here with, with regards to the position of the sprayer and the offset from the position of the camera and, and even, you know, the, uh, you have to do some compensation to make them to make the, them to kind of know where to, to spray. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, we had to also uh, calculate because the, the angel of angles of camera are not so uh, straight, right? So we had to calculate the angels and the offset. All right. Got another video here, it looks like. I think that it will be the demo. Yes, your, your presentation. Cool. Let's, yes. uh... So we're going to see the, the exactly the demo without mm -hmm. the presentation. There you go. Yeah, so, so we're going to see how it works. Yeah, go ahead and talk us through the uh, what it's doing here. Okay, so so as as we can see, the the vehicle moves are along the potato rows. They are they are real real potatoes. And as you can see in the uh, kernel, the the potato crowd the potato beetle is detected, and we're gonna spray pointwise. My only my only feedback from this uh, when we were looking at them for the competition was you should have added sound effects when it sprayed. It should have been like pew pew. I was expecting the kind of music, the theme from the Ghostbusters here. I think it would be just incredible. <laughs> yeah, we we would uh, we would definitely get a YouTube copyright strike for that one. <laughs> we got got to keep our monetization status. Uh, uh, Phil needs coffee money. So, and that, that's all, that's the whole demo. Very cool. I, I, I think I super that... love it. Like if only I had this thing when I was six, collecting potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> that was my dream also. I love it. Oh, let me see okay. here. Go to the next slide. I all think right. that, that's all. Cool. So let's uh, let's talk a little bit about. I've got some more. I've got some more questions here. I'm going to unshare the screen. So, um, if people want to find you uh, and Marta online, you, if they want to ask some questions, where are the best places for them to go? I think the LinkedIn profile is a good place. Um, then what's what's that uh, LinkedIn profile? Should I share on the chat or? Yeah, please, please do. Um, we'll also put that in the show notes as well. Um, so we got some questions from the audience here. If y'all got, if y'all have more questions, please post them in the chat. Again, uh, the Q and A and the giveaway, which we'll be doing in just a few minutes here, are only for people in the Zoom chat. If you're not in the Zoom chat, you can get there by going to OpenCV.live. Um, Alex would like to know exactly how many images did you use? I saw you said like some, maybe some hundreds, but uh, uh, I think he wants a more specific number. It, it was around 500 images. That's significant. Um, did you, did you use any kind of augmentation for these or were they just all no. different, different images? Uh, on that stage of the project, I was not aware of that because uh, I said we are the new in the machine learning. Hmm. Yeah, and we, we did, uh, I, it was not something I was really aware of either until we, I think we had Joseph Nelson on the show and we, we talked about that for a while, about even just very simple, you know, mirroring things, uh, rotating them, how that can really improve the accuracy of a model dramatically. Uh, and so, I mean, it seems like this one works very well. Like what, what uh, do you have any stories of, you know, failures to detect or detecting incorrectly that are, uh, amusing or that you had to solve through a new a different way yeah the well, one thing which helped us was that we know that that the we know the minimum and maximum range when 
where the bugs could potentially appear because mm -hmm. we know where is the potato row and so we, we, we can limit and reduce amount of files false uh, false objects that's uh, interesting it's because because they're you, you sort of know the distance and so you you yeah. don't have to worry about farther afield things and that yeah. probably improves your detection percentage yeah, we were, yeah exactly we we just work on the same distance still so it, it helps to to calibrate the camera and as well as and drop yeah. the false false appearance um dan would like to know were those real bugs in the demo or model bugs and i have a follow-up yeah. question where did you get the fake bugs so we we have printed out and and just cut out of the photo and just give them shape of the ball to to that's really interesting. So you, 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 you made you made paper craft Colorado beetles. Yeah, real size. It's, it's very interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. I was not expecting that. Uh, so I also wanted to ask because I thought that maybe there is a kind of online shop for fake Colorado beetles that would be fun. Well, I, I know you can buy uh, fake teeth in bulk on Alibaba now, so <laughs> I mean, there's got to be a Colorado uh, potato beetle uh, this is seller the out there. information I was going to learn today, so thank you. We, we try. We try. And You're welcome. Sure, but... Well, I mean, how, where do you buy your fake teeth? <laughs> um, <laughs> next, next question. Uh, Stefan would like to know, did you have any way to, or did you have any uh, chance to test on the bugs that were moving? Would, would that affect the uh, effectiveness here? No, no, we had no chance because there is like off season. Just mm. the, the, in the March there were, there was winter actually. So when is the, uh, when, when is the, the on season for these bugs when they're going to be at their worst? It, it starts now. Yeah. Are, are we going to get an update where you you take it out in the field? And I, I would I would love to see that. I think the audience would love to see that as well. We need some more time. <laughs> um, let's see. We've got uh, Flander uh, would like to know what was the hardware provided by Microsoft Azure? Um, did what what kind of GPU? What kind of CPU? Uh, it was mentioned in the slide. Can we share it again? I believe it was the uh, DS. The machine. It was a the DS three V four, V two. Gotcha. V two. Gotcha. Um, thanks again to our generous sponsors at Microsoft Azure and Intel. Um, so yeah, Niraj would like to know how did you compensate the? Uh, let me read the question better here. How did you compensate for the difference in the camera position and the sprayer position to make sure that it was spraying in the right place? Like what kind of what kind of math was involved here? So we created like a so first we tried to rotate this position of, of the back to to get the same angle as the robotic arm. And then we had to calculate with some matrix calculations the right position and then we just translate it to to step models with this real real math honest to goodness math um uh jesse brockman would like to know who won the OpenCV spatial ai contest popular vote we are going to announce that uh, tentatively the plan is to announce it on an episode of the ai show uh with uh, seth juarez so stay tuned for that you will find more information on that in the OpenCV newsletter as soon as we have it you can subscribe to that at opencv.org slash subscribe um michael would like to know do you plan to develop the prototype and try to use it in a real world situation out, out in the field. And yeah, we would like for me on this question. <laughs> yeah, we'd like to. We'd like to mount mount the cameras on the real machine on tractor and uh, gather the data to analyze if our algorithms uh, work works correctly. 
So yeah, yeah. we would like to, but we're gonna see. Is it is it just a question of just having the time to do it? I mean, you know, it's a side project. Everybody's got day jobs, or is there is there some other you know? Is that mostly the reason that it might not happen? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Gotcha. Um, well, I mean, we'd start. A, we need to start a GoFundMe to quit your job and build Potato uh, Buster. <laughs> that's, that's the that's the solution here, obviously. <laughs> um, <laughs> Maybe that's the right. So, uh, Michael would also like to know, did you really get to test it much on other kinds of similar looking bugs, like uh, really large ladybugs or, or other kinds of common, uh, maybe not even pests, just common bugs that you find out in the field? Some of them, you know, are, are beneficial. They, they sometimes eat the pests. Yeah. yeah we, we didn't try it because I think that that's not the case in, in the real environment during the season of uh, these bugs, there are just um, all, all, only these bugs are on potatoes. So I think mm -hmm. that's, that's not a problem. If we spray a little bit more um, hand colors. Okay. I would like um, to add my two cents here. So mm -hmm. I believe that kind of with the way that the data set, uh, kind of that you use to capture the data set, most probably, like when you start testing out life, you will uh, you will find that you want to kind of add more data from the real life fields. And once that happens, I'm sure that all these problems can be solved with enough data set, of, like enough like data and diverse enough data. Yeah, that, that would be a great way to, to improve our model because it's of course limited. Yeah. Um... Uh, C. Saba says there are Colorado beetle models on Sketchfab. You could uh, maybe 3D print some <laughs> and, and uh, do some model <laughs> painting. Or, or maybe, I think you need a giant one. I think you, you download the model and blow it up like 100 times and just have a giant Colorado beetle. That would be very funny. Um, Serge says you should have used lasers. <laughs> I think Serge is yeah, right. <laughs> that was an idea. That, that needs high precision. My my question to Serge is why not both? <laughs> Spray them with pesticide and then zap them. <laughs> <laughs> this would this this way this device would have both water and lasers. Like people would love it. Two of my favorite more. things. You're absolutely right. It's the it's the double tap. You know, spray them and then zap them. Uh, <laughs> I, I I know what I'm going to do next, next competition. <laughs> <laughs> um, Serge would also like to know: did you, did you have to? Did you put any thought into calculating for the wind? This is a really interesting question to me. No, not really. Would, would do? Do you have any thoughts about how you might go about that? Um, if if you, because you know, it, it, it need to, it need a different sensor, or possibly you could use the Raspberry Pi to you know hit up the internet or something to see what the wind direction is. Yeah, but the time was too short. The deadline was really short yeah, for us. Yeah, I, I just uh, mean for future improvements. Limited resources so, so we went, yeah. We like, have to know that. Yeah, do, do you have any thoughts about how you might do it? Mm. Not really? Uh, not really. Gotcha. Um, did you consider making the making the hose so is the hose variable in any way it seems like it just fills up the thing and then squirts and it's the same distance every time did you give any thought to making that more variable um actually it it works in two axes like because there are only two motors so we can rotate and stretch we cannot we, we need a, one more motor to to get full control of the of the robotic arm so yeah there, there were no enough motors in the set to to do that gotcha gotcha um let's see what else we got here uh richard says that uh, a lot of self-driving car companies are using computer graphics to generate virtual environments to train their systems in do you think that would have been more efficient here or could uh, help this project to create a, a little virtual potato field and have your virtual bugs in there? I, it's hard to say for me because I'm a bit inexperienced in, in that field, but I think that's the solution could potentially improve the project. Mm. Um, 
Jesse suggests that uh, you can just check for wind, and if it's too windy, don't spray. <laughs> I That's how it works. Yeah, it works. It's smart. I mean, I totally agree because with a certain kind of pressure from the pump, uh, all kind of um, speeds of the wind up until a certain kind of level are negligible. Yeah, yeah, it won't it won't really affect because especially yep. because it's such a short throw, as it were. Yep. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's interesting. Um, David asks, with this specific choice of targeting system, does it affect what pesticides someone would choose to use? Would they use a different pesticide for this system than they would use for a more for a larger like mass spraying system? Probably, probably yes, because if we uh, tar I'm point wise on the back. We don't have such a strong chemicals, uh, and so I think that's that's the case. Interesting, cool. Um, I'm going to take a break here before we. Uh, if you got more questions, please go ahead and use the Zoom Q and A functionality to ask those. We're going to take a break here to do our giveaway. The way this works is that I'm going to ask a question based on the slides from this presentation, and you in the Zoom audience will have the chance to win $200 of Microsoft Azure credits from our generous sponsors at Microsoft. The question will be from the slides, and you have to answer it in the chat window there. If you have won the contest, if you won the trivia contest in the last two months, please do not answer the question. Give other people a chance to answer. Um, so. Get ready to answer. During the presentation, we learned about the Lego set used to create this awesome robot. This is a two-part question. What was the name of the configuration used, one of the five available, and what is the name of the configuration that won last year's competition? You have to answer both. Uh, we got some people getting the first one. Some of them tried to jump out ahead of me. Man, Alex, Partha, get out of my head, Partha. Uh, John Paulo, close, close, close. Ah, uh, we got. Man, we're we're close. I see. I see Zach. Zach is the closest here. He's 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 got an extra letter, but I'm gonna <laughs> allow it. Uh, the answers were uh, MVP and Charlie. Uh, Congratulations, Zach. Please send one email to phil at opencv.org. Congratulations. You may recognize Zach from episode 48 or so of this webinar. He was Team LA Inoculum with the really cool um, bacterial colony counter project, which was another one of my personal favorites. It's always awesome. I know Anna and I would talk about this uh, when we're, when we're doing this contest stuff, the best thing is when you see stuff that you could not have guessed you would see. And I think the uh, Colorado Beetle Buster and LA Inoculum's bacterial colony counter were two things that if you gave me you know, a week, I wouldn't have been able to guess <laughs> that, that we would see anything like these, these other two. So uh, congratulations, Zach. And I also yeah. like love biology and like it's thinking that it can kind of really, really help the research kind of just blew my mind. So yeah, thank you. Thank you, Doc. Thank you, Doc. Yes, absolutely. Um, let's see what else we got here. Uh, Surge suggests that you collect the bugs and make a bug burger out of it. Gross. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see what else we got here. But if you eat it with a fake teeth. Ah, there we got we got it now. You make the bug burger and eat it with the fake teeth. Um, Richard would like to know: Is the system fast enough to detect moving bugs? I think we talked about that a bit. Do, do you think it would be a, a a useful improvement in the future, though, to try to to maybe add to it flying bugs, flying insects, to be like, okay, where are these guys going? Uh, potentially, yes, yeah, but. It it would be hard to target these bugs, flying bugs point-wise. So it would be like more like spraying something around. Gotcha. Um, are, are, do you have any thoughts about what you would need to do to scale this up in terms of power uh, and, and whatnot to, to use in a, in a real life situation? I think the, the most important thing is, is to try 
this algorithms, this model in the real environment. And the, the scale is not really hard to do, I think. There are, I think that there are no uh, limits to, to, to do that. We just need many cameras to, 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 come, to record video from many, many angles and yeah. detect as, as many bugs as, as possible. Right on. Jesse suggests, what about collecting the bugs with a vacuum? That's really interesting. I'm not sure if it is possible because the box is heavy a bit. Mm. So it, it could be heavy, and, heavy and sticky. They like they like sticking yeah. to stuff. It, it um, leaves. Yeah, yeah. I could it, maybe. Yeah, I can imagine there'd be a lot of trial and error there with getting a vacuum powerful enough to get the bug and precise enough to get the bug, but also not damaging. Uh, you know, at putting mechanical yeah. damage on the leaves. Mm -hmm. would be would be a, a difficult thing there that could be really cool though to uh i, I could see that being you you know for uh, uh organic agriculture for example things that you, you can't use pesticides yeah. or even even maybe smaller smaller bugs this could be adapted uh with a vacuum for smaller bugs yeah, but, but then you can use la laser well i mean there's nothing to say that you couldn't laser them and then vacuum them off to keep the plant clean <laughs> I think I think that might be that might be the the true way here. Uh, Zach suggests a tractor beam, maybe out of the price range here. I think uh, yeah, the the classic Star Trek, <laughs> you know, uh, tractor beam, maybe maybe out of the budget, maybe out of the budget. <laughs> um, Partha asks about occlusion. Have, is have you tried out the system when it can only see part of a bug? How does it perform there? I was not really in the mind to 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 get into such a detail details, but I, as far as I remember, it was working because the the pattern of the of the of these bugs is quite simple because they are strips, right? So it's easy to detect, even if there is only a part of the bug. Yeah. Um, I'd be interested to see how it worked. Uh, this brings up another question that uh, the audience uh, submitted here, which is, are you planning on open sourcing any or all of this, whether the code or the trained model, for example? Uh, I'm considering that, but I have to look into that code and check if, if it is possible and worth. Just just how how embarrassing your code is. No. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I I used I used I, I used to struggle with this myself um, until I realized I don't care. <laughs> um, I think this is the right way to go. Otherwise, you would never kind of open source anything because there is no perfect code in the world. Yeah, I think no fear with open source. Just put it out there. Somebody will either use it or think it sucks and not use it. Worst case scenario, you know. Um, I've actually had people hire me based on open source code I wrote that I thought sucked. <laughs> so, I mean, it's not it's not necessarily. Uh, I think it's only positive, really. Um, uh, Andre would like to know: <laughs> could could your apparatus uh, battle cockroaches uh, at home? <laughs> we have to modify our our model, but it's possible. I think it could be there a very, be... go ahead, Anna. There would be a robot vacuum cleaner <laughs> and robot cockroach buster. I think this is smart. Yeah. You could actually unify them into a single kind of apparatus, right? Gonna it uh, kills the cockroach and then vacuum cleans that. It shoots it, it shoots the cockroach with a laser, then it vacuums <laughs> it up. <laughs> We've solved it, everybody. There should be fake teeth somewhere in this <laughs> construction. I... I think it's it's too complicated for free month project. Yes, definitely. Um, especially here in the in the in the city, uh, it's it's uh, you're you're going to see a cockroach or two out here uh, just occasionally. Welcome to San Francisco. Um, any more questions, please? We're we're taking them. We're, we're continuing to take them. We got about nine minutes left. Um, I have a couple more questions of my own, which are. Do you, are you, do you plan to do any more improvements to this? We talked about maybe bringing it out into the field, but is there any, um, do you feel like energized to keep working on it? Or are you kind of like, well, you know, we, we did we did well in the contest and now just move on to the next thing. What's what's next for, for you? 
Yeah, I, I think that that's a cool project, but the next step is to get the data for, from real environment. Uh, that's that's must, must have to, to continue with that project, to, to check our uh, possibilities, uh, what we can do with, with that uh, approach. Yeah, um, I personally would like to see a uh, simulated potato field with the fidelity of the unreal uh, simulated city they used in the newer matrix movie that would be that'd be pretty cool i would just go hang out there no this is an idea for metaverse yeah just walk out into the potato field and sit there for a while it sounds nice and then huge colorado buses uh, gigantic, like the, gigantic the size the size of a city bus <laughs> and you have a laser to kill them huh and oh, a vacuum <laughs> you have to fight them with a vacuum cleaner it's like a like a dust buster you know a little handheld battery guy um that's that's going to be my next unreal engine demo obviously <laughs> um let's see some uh, some business here uh open cv weekly webinar we've talked about this before is getting our own virtual production set we will be using the same set from OpenCV AI Game Show. It's being modified by our friends at Light Twist. We'll hopefully have a little demonstration of that maybe next week or the week after, and then we'll start using it for every episode. We're really excited about this. Um, thanks so much to all of you who watch the show every week. It would not be possible for us to do any of this stuff without your support and your enthusiasm and your work on these con petitions, because a lot of you, you know, submitted things for that, and uh, thanks so much. Um, yeah, uh, thanks, Anna, for joining us. Uh, do, do you have any uh, last last words for the for the episode? Would you like to uh, promote or, or pitch anything, Anna? No, no, I, no, not this time. I just, yeah, I just wanted to join Athila and saying thank you so much for joining. Uh, I still am kind of super surprised by the large geography that we have here, which ma makes me feel that we are kind of united in this interest to computer vision and busting Colorado metals. Yes, together we are mighty. Um, Mikhail, any uh, last any last thoughts for the people in the audience? Anything you'd like to direct them to? Website, anything like that? It was an honor to, to be here, and thank you for for appreciating our project. I'm glad. And thank you very much. Thank you very much. And, and, and participating in the in this competition was really fun. I recommend for everyone with some idea, even with if it's killing a bugs. And if you know, if, if that isn't the perfect thing to end the episode with, uh, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you next week. Same bat time, same bat channel, 9 a.m. Pacific. Take care of yourselves. Take care of somebody else. Thanks so much for watching this episode of the webinar. Please hit that like button, subscribe, and don't forget to tap the little bell icon to be notified when new episodes drop. This week's episode was brought to you by Intel and Microsoft Azure as part of OpenCV Spatial AI Contest. Follow along with the Oak Delight Contest hashtag. If you'd like to be in the audience next week, subscribe to the OpenCV newsletter.